Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to WeGuard Securities Limited Q2 FY24 earnings conference call hosted by ICICI Securities. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchstone phone. Please note that the conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Aniruddha Joshi, sir. Thank you and over to you. Yeah, thanks, uh, Akshay. On behalf of ICICI Securities, we welcome you all to Q2 FY24 Results Conference Call of Vigard Industries. We have with us senior management represented by Mr. Mithun Chittilapilli, Managing Director, Mr. Ramachandran V, Director and Chief Operating Officer, and Mr. Sudarshan Kasturi, Senior VP and Chief Financial Officer. Now I hand over the call to the management for the initial comments on the quarterly performance and then we will open the floor for question and answer session. Thanks and over to you, sir. Uh, thank you, Anrud uh, and ICSA Securities for hosting this call. A very warm welcome to everyone present today for today's call. Thank you for joining us today to discuss the operating and financial performance of our company for the second quarter and the first half of financial year 2023-24. I trust all of you have had a chance to refer to our investor presentation, which was shared yesterday. The second quarter witnessed subdued consumer demand, especially in the discretionary categories like consumer durables, thereby impacting top-line growth. We have reported a consolidated net revenue of 1,134 crore in Q2, which is higher by almost 15% on a YOY basis. Excluding the revenues from Sunflame, uh, like for like to like comparison, the revenue growth is 8.7% YOY. In Q2, the South market grew by 6.7% YOY, while the non South market grew by 11.3% YOY. As non South markets continue to grow in double digits, their contribution to total revenues has increased to 43.8%, indicating enhanced scale for VGAR across all regions of the country. In our electronic segment, comprising of stabilizers and inverters, we reported revenue growth of 12% YOY. In the electrical segments, which remains our largest revenue contributor, comprising of wires, pumps, switch gears, and switches, we registered a growth of 9.6% YOY in Q2 FI24. In the new durable segment where we market fans, water heaters, kitchen appliances, and air coolers, the growth has slowed to 5.1% YOY. The effect of sluggish consumer demand and tepid weather conditions has impacted top line growth, particularly in the consumer durable segment. We have reported an improvement in gross margin to 33.8% in this quarter from 29.3% in Q2 of last year, an increase of 450 basis points by OI. Further, the gross margin is also higher by 130 basis points compared with 32.5%, which we reported in the first quarter. Softening of commodity prices is reflecting in the gross margin and we are now moving closer towards the pre-COVID levels. We believe we can further drive another 100 basis points improvement to reach the pre-COVID level gross margin. EBITDA, excluding other income, was 93 crore in Q2, an increase of 26.5% by OI. In Q2, we have recognized the fair valuation gain of 10 crore on the Gigadine investment. Gigadine is making good progress towards meeting technical and commercial milestones. The VGAD board has also approved a further investment of 20 crore in Gigadan in order to fund scaling up of the pilot plant, product specification improvement, and preparatory work required for Series B funding. Excluding other income, EBITDA margin of 8.2% is 80 basis points higher compared to the margin of 7.4% of Q2 of last year. Profit after tax in Q2 FI24 was 59 crore compared with PAT of 43.7 crore in Q2 of last year, an increase of 35% on a YOY basis. Cash flows have remained strong. Cash from operating activities are at about 300 crores during the first six months, and it has helped us to fund capex and capacity expansion. And we have also fully repaid the working capital borrowing of 100 crores that ex existed at the beginning of the year. In Vita Consumer Products Limited, our only owned manufacturing subsidy, we are progressing well as the manufacturing units are coming up as scheduled. The first plant in Pantanagar has reached uh, its planned output. The battery and kitchen products unit will be commissioned in Q Q3 and uh, will be scaled up in Q4. 
in the case of sunflame there is a decline in top line growth although the margins are healthy the entire kitchen appliances industry at large is currently witnessing sluggish demand there are also some internal gaps we have identified and we have undertaken action to address the decline we are also working on initiatives to start realizing the synergies between both vivar and sunflame consumer response uh, for our recent launches like fans and mixer grinders have been positive and uh, starting with upcoming festive season we expect strong top line growth in the second half of the year with that i conclude my opening comments and would like to uh, to thank anuruddha and his team at icic security for hosting this call i would like to now request the moderator to open the floor for q and a thank you very much we will now begin the question and answer session anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on their touch tone telephone if you wish to remove yourself from the question queue you may press star and two participants are requested to use handset while asking a question ladies and gentlemen we will wait for a moment while the question queue assemble the first question is from the line of natasha jain from nirmal bank please go ahead uh, good afternoon gentlemen my first question is on the electrical side so so our uh, product category consists of wires switches and switch gears and all these are ancillaries to real estate which is doing well so what could be the reason for us to not post a stronger double digit kind of growth here compared to all our peers so first question is that and in the same segment can you also throw some light as to how the pumps segmented like are we beginning to see some strength building there or is the market still stressed okay so regarding electrical uh, you know um, we got uh, you know uh, sells lot of its product on a you know b2c basis which means we sell through distributors to our retailers uh, which then goes into you know individual housing or uh, small projects we got uh, presence in very large uh, projects is limited so but apart from that most of our peers have also mentioned that demand for house wiring cables has been muted uh, for last quarter so uh, what we have come to know is that even in uh, you know b2b segment in house wiring cables the demand has been muted uh, the only segment that is doing well is uh, the large infrastructure projects uh, you know run by you know central and state governments which are using uh, industrial and you know underground cables that is the only segment that seems to be uh, doing well within the table and where we got does not have any presence regarding pumps yes so we have now completed almost uh, you know two three four quarters of decline and uh, i think in last quarter onwards we have started to see an increase in uh, sales however it's not enough uh, you know the largest contributor in electrical is wires so with the wires uh, sales not growing very fast uh, you know the entire electrical segment growth has come down to you know something like 9 10% understood sir that's helpful and so my second question is on the consumer durables portfolio so our channel checks indicate a slow down for demand for fans demand and also a possible price cut so did we at vgard experience something similar for fans see we have not cut, cut any prices but i think um, when the there was unseasonal rains in north uh, you know some companies i think when us uh, we were forced to offer some discounts in those parts you know uh, northern region because north was completely washed out uh, we, this is also meant that uh, in fans and water heaters especially the price increases that were required to be taken uh, for offsetting the raw material prices increase has not been fully taken and we hope uh, in the next uh, six months you know some of that will get corrected as uh, you know we enter the season for water heaters and uh, as we will be entering season for fans in march and so how is coolers air coolers i think for us coolers has done well but coolers is uh, you know still uh, you know coolers on an annualized run run rate will be close to 90 to 100 odd crores so it is not enough to really pull up the uh, you know entire consumer durable basket uh, the larger uh, you know products like water heaters and fan contribute uh, most uh, this quarter especially we have seen softening of demand for water heaters uh, which is better last year and that has pulled down the overall you know performance understood sir thank you i have more questions but i'll get back in the queue thank you the next question is from the line of rahul agarwal from incred capital 
please go ahead hi uh, good evening thanks for the opportunity so first question on ecd margins where do you see this number by march 24 so i think uh, we used to be something around 5 6% uh, you know uh, ebit margins for uh, ecd and i think uh, we have indicated that we would like to you know increase our margins by at least 1 1% again most of that increase uh, would come at least uh, to you know 2 to 3% of that should come from consumer durable segment so we are hopeful that um, you know starting with water heater season i think Uh, we are also a little unfortunate in the sense we are sitting still with some old inventory of water heaters which were produced last season. I think once that starts, uh, you know, getting offloaded, we are hopeful of increase. But we have to also understand that demand is extremely sluggish. So uh, market leaders, uh, major market brands, are refusing to take timely price increases or, like uh, someone mentioned earlier, some of them are resorting to price discounts. um which will mean that it's going to be difficult for us to recover this margins you know it will it will get delayed but i think uh, i think uh, apart from water heaters fans we are seeing some traction so we have some new launches uh, that gaining good uh, traction and um, they are also on the premium side so we are hopeful that you know in fans at least uh, we should see a better performance this year water heaters we are to wait and see the season is yet to start uh, there is um uh, you know we are hoping that uh, the the winter does kick in uh, soon and uh, that should drive the demand uh, for water heating got it uh, secondly on sunflame uh, you know given what how the first half has been uh, would you still think that 330 350 crore of top line with a 11 12% operating margin is possible for the full year so i think uh, we have to also see sunflame in relation with the performance of the entire kitchen industry as you would have noticed um, few of the players have already announced with uh, the largest um, the larger players are talking about 15 to 16% uh, uh, yoy revenue decline sunflame's decline has been slightly higher because uh, it has like like we mentioned in the opening remarks there were some uh, you know product gaps there were some uh, issues in terms of uh, after sales which is all got resolved and we have also you know the, the new team has uh, settled down well uh, you know they came on board only in april of april and may so they needed 3 uh, 4 months to you know uh, take over the uh, you know proper uh, take over the management of uh, sunflame i think h2 we should post uh, much better numbers uh, but we have to also keep in mind that the entire kitchen industry is de growing uh, sharply uh so so our our hope is that uh, in relation with the industry we should do better uh i don't think we will be able to post a full year uh, increase in sales but i think in h2 we are hoping to uh, you know at least uh, look at uh, the numbers we did last year so at least there is a decline we'll wait and see i think um, uh, let's see how the, the you know demand goes but because since um, we are also keep in mind that post diwali the sales have been very neutral for kitchen appliances in last year so the base is also low Uh, for sunflame uh, you know for last year in h2 got it and lastly on gigadyne uh, just your point for the equity valuation i think uh, it's bit not clear from the press release uh, what is it right now and uh, how will bigad benefit from this investment you know apart from the monetary upside uh, and of on the financial side of it uh, what is the business uh, goal here Okay, Ram. Uh, I'm not sure whether you were able to hear the question properly. But yeah, can... no, I heard the question, but then I'll answer. So I think uh, there were two parts to the question. Uh, one was uh, you were trying to understand, you know, uh, the source of uh, gain. So fundamentally, what has happened is, you know, uh, there was an uh, there was a valuation on the basis of which uh, we had invested into Gigadyne. Uh, two years had passed, so you know, the, you know, the accountants, uh, you know, annually, you know, they they look at uh, these investments and you know they mark to market. So uh, they felt that you know the uh, the technology development agenda has uh, progressed further, and you know with the pilot plant, you know uh, the technology has also been uh, commercialized at at a pilot plant scale. What was uh, otherwise you know uh, you know very basic and uh, getting done uh, you know uh, at a lab scale. so uh, i think they wanted to reflect uh, you know the uh, you know improved valuation uh, you know uh, consequent to the uh, progress on technology development and technology commercialization 
so i think uh, we has got uh, the evaluation done of the entity and you know uh, we are just reflecting the increment evaluation uh, and accounting it as gain and it is notional so uh, it is remaining on the uh, books and uh, you know will be the case yeah? so it's um, i mean uh, it's uh, basically you know an accounting requirement uh, coming to the second part on how vigard will gain from uh, vigard i think you know Gigadine is not a financial investment for Viva. It's a strategic investment for Viva. Yeah, and uh, you know, with that investment, you know, we are making investment in uh, you know uh, what I would say uh, the deep tech space, uh, which has uh, high risk also. I mean, you know, not every initiative in that space succeeds, and we must keep that in uh, mind. Uh, but fundamentally, we believe uh, that uh, this technology is the best fit uh, for our application in inverter and battery, and uh which is the reason why you know we have decided to back uh, this technology development uh we believe uh, that in the next um, 18 to 24 months you know they should be able to move uh, from pilot scale to uh, manufacturing so i think once uh, you know the manufacturing uh, activity uh, you know commences i think we are should be able to you know uh, place these products in the market Uh, as a big card offering, and I think that should be able to uh, drive our revenues uh, and maybe in time profitability. Once the you know, initial investment towards uh, you know building uh, this concept uh, in the market is uh, through. Yeah. What is the value of Gigadine today? Mm, Sudarshan, uh, it's, it's, I think uh, it's, the uh, the valuation is now at two ninety three crore. Okay, sir. Okay, thank you. I'll come back in the queue to understand further. Thanks. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. You may press star and want to ask a question. The next question is from the line of Bhavin Vitlani from SBI Mutual Fund. Please go ahead. Yeah. Good evening, gentlemen. Uh, so my first question is on the electrical uh, segment. Uh, so if you could just help us understand. Uh, what percentage of uh, the segment is wires, and what was the YOI growth in the wires uh, segment uh, in the quarter or the first half? Uh, see, we don't give out uh, you know uh, these figures, um, so you know we will discuss it offline. But uh, but uh, wires is uh, a very large part of electrical. I mean, uh, wires is the largest constituent of that uh, you know uh, subcategory. So actually, the question is because you mentioned uh, pumps has been degrowing. So, uh, and in that case, yeah, is it that uh, if I may, if I may answer that, I think you know the the wire growth is uh, bringing down the electrical growth. Uh, the pump growth is uh, moderate and uh, not uh, recovered to uh, long term growth levels. So typically, pump you know we would grow uh, between eight to twelve percent. Yeah, and uh, I think it is uh, it is much below that. However, we are not degrowth. We have not degrown for the first half. Uh, so yeah, so the other categories uh, have posted strong growth, and uh, you know, uh, cable growth has been uh, lower than the category electrical category growth. Yeah. Sure, uh, because I was really surprised because uh, KEI in the results today, which they list out the wires as a segment that that segment grew like twenty two percent. And so was a little disappointed looking at uh, single digit numbers. So, is it that uh, something that uh, the, the competition has got aggressively into class five, and which Vigard is not in, and given the quality uh, standards that you have, and that is in hampering the growth rates? No, I think it's a question of choice. So many years back, uh, Vigard at least made a choice to be in the B two C space. So we exited whatever. You know, we used to have businesses that were supplying UPA systems to bank ATMs, which we shut down. We had businesses that were supplying large underground cables to big uh, EPC contractors, which we shut down. So these are all conscious choices that were taken uh, from 2009 to you know 2016-17. And for many years, EPC business in India struggled. Uh, but now there seems to be uh, you know a cycle. So I we believe it's a cycle. So maybe there is a Uh, infrastructure boom uh, that is happening in the country. Uh, probably also it is going to happen before the election, and uh, they want to show you know showcase some you know uh, 
some growth, uh, some some investments in the country before the election. So all these things will happen. But I think long term, still the consumer business will do well. So many players like KEI and Polycab are heavily indexed towards uh, you know product business, whereas brands like us are more you know into the retail part of the business. So uh, so yeah, so we. But I but I think even in uh, even in wire, house wiring cable. Uh, many of our larger peers have told that uh, have indicated that there has been slow growth. So I don't think it's a regard only issue. Uh, you know, um, KEI I'm not sure. I mean, again, it's a projects company. It's, uh, it's there in retail, but it's more of a projects company. But I can tell you that uh, the, pro the the retail consumer, the B2C part of wire business has been slow. Yeah. Uh, the second thing is I want to understand the, the margins on the consumer durable segment, which has been um, um, negative in most quarters, even in this quarter. And uh, in prior quarters, you highlighted that the newer, newly commissioned uh, fans facility, which which was underutilized and, and it was ramping up, and then there were issues related to the PPW fans, which were imported, and you had to pivot to the local, and that had some cost issues. So if you could just help us understand uh, the negative margins in the consumer durable segment and, and um, the efforts taken by the management to kind of turn these around and when could we see the 5-7% so margin bracket as you alluded to in, earlier in this uh, Listen, can I take that? Yeah. yeah. Uh, so I think, you know, uh, we need to look at it in two parts. Uh, one is uh, gross margin and uh, one is EBITDA. Uh, I think uh, EBITDA is fundamentally, you know, the, the business is, uh, I mean, you know, it, it's a growth. I think the consumer durable growth uh, uh, has been, uh, you know, weaker, uh, you know, first half of this year compared to the kind of growth rates that uh, we have been enjoying last two years and compared to what we had planned. So I think, you know, uh, some amount of stress is uh, coming because of that, because the growth has not been adequate to, you know, uh, uh, cover the investments that we have been making to scale up this business. Yeah. Uh, uh, that's uh, one part of it. Um, I think uh, the other part of it is, you know, fundamentally, you know, related to the uh, uh, margin recovery. I think while, uh, you know, margins on uh, electrical and uh, margins on, uh, you know, the electronics have uh, by and large uh, recovered uh, gross margins. Yeah. I think... Uh, uh, the um, uh, the and then you know, we have a you know uh, we have an intervention in terms of a manufacturing facility coming up from for the you know battery uh, uh, for battery and uh, you know the we had uh, commenced the uh, factory for uh, inverter um, and stabilizer which I think you know some more benefits uh, we expect you know in the next six months to one year so I think the margin recovery journey on electronics and electrical is uh, by and large uh, complete right. Uh, however, I think, you know, because of uh, the slowness in the market, actually the market has been slow from, I think, uh, September, October of last year. I think it was more strongly seen in uh, the fan category and the, and kitchen. And uh, lately it is also being seen in uh, water heater, uh, you know, fundamentally because, you know, uh, part of it is seasonal also because I think uh, the summers uh, have extended in, uh, you know, west and, sorry, east and south. So uh, I think uh, this year the operator season is uh, slower to come by. So these factors, uh, you know, are affecting the top line growth, and you know that's kind of affecting uh, the conversion of cross margin to EBITDA. Uh, second thing is, you know, the pricing transmission. You know, because of the slowness in the market, I think you know there is a lot of uh, competition. So the pricing transmission has also been impacted. So although our um, you know gross margins have improved, uh, you know, in this category from last year, you know, if you look at uh, half year basis, you know, we have improved our gross margin by about uh, two odd percent and probably the exit gross margin may be even two and a half, three percent higher, three percent higher. But I think uh, there is another uh, three to four percent of uh, recovery which has to happen. Yeah? I think uh, we have uh, some interventions in this area. I think, um, uh, I think the uh, you know, the, we have uh, product launches in uh, fans and I think that should uh, change the product mix and, you know, support the margin improvement even if, uh, you know, the growth is uh, tested. Thankfully for us, uh, fan growth has been all right. Yeah, fan growth has been all right. Even air cooler growth has been all right. So I think um, the kitchen again, we are setting up a factory, I think, which will help uh, our competitiveness and help us to recover our, um, you know, gross margins in this area. 
So I think water heater uh, uh, and fan uh, are the two categories, you know, where uh, this, uh, you know, we are expecting that it will take some more time. Hopefully, you know, in the next uh, three to nine months, I think fan should come back. Water heater should uh, partly come back, uh, you know, uh, towards uh, this uh, upcoming quarter. And I think some recovery will happen only next year again when the season starts. Because we, you know, because of the lower uh, uptake, uh, you know, uh, in water heater, the inventories are stretching uh, later into the season. Yeah. So, and that's affecting our ability to uh, benefit from the uh, easing uh, commodity uh, environment, right? Uh, and also, uh, because of slower growth, I think, you know, the uh, pricing transmission is also getting impacted. So, I think there are no fundamental issues here to my mind. I think, you know, some of the categories, uh, you know, will roll over. I think a bit of challenge on water heater uh, during the, uh, you know, uh, the commodity transition happens. Uh, that, that part of it is a bit of a problem for us uh, compared to the market. Yeah. But I think to the extent that, uh, uh, you know, growth, growth is slower in water heater, I think uh, there is some pricing pressure also which can develop. So keeping all that in mind, I would say that, you know, it will take us slightly longer for water heater to fully recover to pre-COVID levels. Uh, but I think you will see some recovery further uh, in the upcoming quarter. Last question from my side. Uh, you know, if you take out the, the sunflame acquisition, the, while the growth is high single digit, 9% thereabouts, but the employee cost increase is closer to the 20% mark. So if you could just help us understand uh, this bit. Yeah, so that's what you want to get. Now, there are some swings in the employee cost when you compare with last year. Um, you know, it, it basically comes from one variable pay provision and second, the addition of uh, how many subsidies. Um, last year, we had uh, we had reversed the variable pay provision because at the end of H1, it was clear that uh, a payout was not going to happen. Uh, this year, we have provided in full, so there is about a 20 crore swing in that alone. Um, so, 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 on a like for like basis. Like payroll increase is about 15 16 percent. About 15 to 16 percent is the like to like increase if you remove all these things. Okay, so this this looks like much higher than the growth, uh, the underlying growth in the industry. And um, um, so, is it that uh, are we seeing growth in the other sectors and, and that the pressure on the? Yeah, can I answer that? Yeah. So I think uh, you also need to see this, uh, you know, the the you know the, the this uh, together with you know our transition from uh, um, uh, what I would say sourcing to manufacturing, right? So if you look at it, you know, last year uh, you know we had uh, one new factory come up, you know, which was uh, in Pantanagar, you know, which was for you know stabilizer and uh, inverter. Okay, and uh, we have uh, the battery plant, uh, which is uh, and the kitchen plant, which is uh, likely to come by end of uh, December. Uh, I think you know, staffing costs related to that are also sitting there. And you know, even if you uh, if you take out Sunflame also, uh, Simon addition itself has brought in like you know 120 or head count, uh, plus establishing the CPL and manufacturing unit. So there are there are some FTE increases. Uh, which 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 takes the uh, payroll increase to about 15 to 16 percent. I understand. So it's just a lag impact, and as we yeah, yeah. no, catch also, us up. Yeah, I think also what needs to happen, right? You know, our gross margin improvement has to be more because you know when we were sourcing, you know, the gross margin was uh, you know including the manufacturing uh, cost, right? But here that's being accounted below. Fair. Yeah. Thank you so much for taking my questions. Thank you. A reminder to all the participants, you may press star and one to ask a question. The next question is from the line of Sonali Salgaukar from Jefferies. Please go ahead. So thank you for the opportunity. So my question is an extension to uh, Bhavan's earlier question. We have seen about 450 bits rise in the gross margin and just about 70 to 80 this rise of the EBITDA margin. Of course, one of that you explained as employee cost, but there has been a, a, a sharp rise in the other expenses as well, wherein we maintain that we have retained our ad or promotion spend for about 2.2 percentage of sales. So could you please uh, throw more color as to where we are seeing this increase and how sustainable is this going forward? 
So I think there are, uh, uh, you know, apart from employee cost uh, and ANP, uh, the other, uh, of course, ANP has not gone up uh, significantly. The other thing that has gone up uh, much more than last year was uh, travel and, uh, you know, travel costs. Uh, so the, the frequency of traveling and all that has increased uh, much more because we have now, there is no restriction on travel as such. So, so uh, you know, sales team traveling, you know, that also includes local and outstation travel that has significantly gone up. And also, some of it is due to the increases in, you know, hotel prices and all that which we've been reading about in the paper where, you know, there has been a rebound in tourism. So some places the hotel prices have gone up significantly. So all these things are adding to the uh, other expenditure. One more item, one major item in other expenditure is what Ram mentioned. So outsourced uh, manpower cost, uh, which is bulk of it is sitting in the factories, they come in other expenditure. So like Ram said, the increase in uh, gross margin had to be more than this to offset that. So some of the increases are due to reduction in, uh, you know, commodity prices, but some of the increases in regard is also because of a uh, change from outsourcing to insourcing and once these factories gain scale, we will have further increases in, you know, gross margin. So, um, are anything to add? Yeah, that's the, the other expenses line has, um, has elements relating to factory and during this transition when we are moving from outsourcing to in-house, the base year and the current year are not really comparable. Just wait for another two, three quarters, then the base also becomes on the same, uh, the same basis. So what percentage of our manufacturing is in-house this quarter versus same quarter last year? Currently it's about 65%. There is 65% plus there is Sunflame, uh, not Sunflame, sorry, there are, uh, yeah, 65% last year would have been? 7-8% less. About 8% less, yeah. Uh, but also, Mithun, uh, what happens is, you know, the uh, it's not a matter of, uh, you know, sales percentage, you know, like the factories which are coming up, you know, the manpower is there. Uh, because, you know, they're all going to get uh, commissioned in November, right? People would have been hired before, trained and all those things. Yeah, so we have uh, one factory that is getting ready and for uh, uh, the so uh, Sonali, if you see the movement also, it's not really that significant. Huh? You, you look at first half, other expenses has yeah. gone from 293 to 370. Yeah. 293, uh, 293 did not include Sunflame. Sunflame is 23. So 293 plus 23 is 316. 316 has become 370. It's not really a huge movement. I understand. Sir. So my second question is about the festive demand that Navratri is behind us. What kind of a consumer sentiment did you see, especially in your plans portfolio during the festive season? And uh, what are the indications you're getting for the upcoming Diwali season? So see, like Ram said, uh, in fans we are getting traction uh, also because we have some new launches that are doing well. Uh, we have recently launched a new range of fans that is getting good uh, traction. What I hate is, uh, like I said, the more than Diwali, it is that the season is yet to start. Although, you know, because of big billion days and those kind of pre-Diwali sales, e-commerce uh, seems to be, some sales to be happening, but the general trade sales have uh, not yet really started. Uh, so we'll wait and see how how it plays out. Um, uh, typically for us, uh, it's post. I mean, like once we complete uh, the full month of Diwali, only we can comment. But uh, we can say that uh, water heaters, we are still seeing some stress. The others are uh, largely doing okay. Understand. So my last question: Any significant pricing action? Uh, if you have taken during Q2 or any planned pricing actions in Q3, either way, either upwards or downwards. See, there is hardly any pricing, you know, at the best, I think uh, almost entirely it is volume growth. Whatever sales growth you are saying is volume growth. There is no pricing increase, uh, you know, happening. Uh, like I said, there is still pricing gaps existing in fans, especially ceiling fans and uh, electric water heaters. And that uh, we are hoping to take in the next six to nine months time. Uh, ceiling fans, uh, you know, we still have not, you know, we believe that the industry has still not fully passed on everything. Uh, primarily because there was also a major shift from the traditional fans to BLDC fans. So, uh, you know, so, so some, you know, so, so it's not, uh, of the older models are not, you know, finding takers. And that's also one of the reasons why some companies are not, you know, uh, fully passed it on. So how much is your fans portfolio premium and how do you pre define premium? 
price point? Uh, Ram, you want to take this? Yeah, I think you know. Uh, uh, I would say that about uh, now about uh, 40, 45 percent would be uh, premium for us. Yeah, and uh, that would be like you know about uh, let's say you know closer to you know to three thousand plus kind of uh, price point, right? So. Understand, sir. Thank you very much for answering my questions. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. You may press star and want to ask the question. The next question is on the line of Anirudh Joshi from ICICI Securities. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, sir, uh, we have a specific key and uh, it can be very large. We can't hear you properly. Yeah. Is it okay, sir? Yes, sir. Please go ahead. Yeah, sir. Uh, we have a finance facility at Roorkee, I guess, under a separate subsidiary uh, with a lower tax rate, effective tax rate. Uh, but we are still not seeing any reduction in the consolidated tax rate. So, how should we see the uh, overall profitability happening at the new plant? And yes. any tax rate guidance that you would like to give? That is question one. And secondly, I guess, uh, uh, I guess three to four quarters ago, I guess we had introduced water purifiers through the e-commerce channel. So any update on uh, that and uh, regarding the general trade uh, launch, any any update on that? Um, yeah, Rurki plant is under VGAD, so you know that will not impact the uh, ETR. Um, the plants which are coming up under the new subsidiary, the only one which has reached scale as of now is Pantnagar. So for it for the effect to be seen, we just need to wait for a few other uh, plants also to come up. So uh, the the new manufacturing entity, uh, the first plant, the only plant that is running today is the Pantnagar plant. That is uh, giving us some tax benefit, but it's still small in relation with the overall, you know, uh, tax outgo of we got. So. We will start to see maybe end of next year uh, some reduction in ETRs because as the new manufacturing entity will be under uh, about 17 percent tax is about 25 percent for the company. Okay. Um, and regarding water purifiers, Ram, you are taking this? Yeah. I think we are, yeah, water purifiers are doing well. Uh, you know, uh, I think you know one of the reasons that you know we decided to limit it to commerce is. Stages of development of you know, offerings, right? And uh, we had uh, very good success uh, with the offerings that we have bought to the market. And uh, the commerce is getting well. It is today, I think, uh, probably our second largest category after water is around commerce. So, uh, even ahead of stabilizer, and so that's the good part of it. And uh, I think you know we will uh, we will take to you know uh, to take to mature uh, the product portfolio best so that we have to address the tech and uh, we are able to uh, you know uh, we are we are confident that uh, these stocks uh, uh, having consumers. Uh, we have a good uh, installed base uh, to get good feedback. I think, you know, post that, I think, you know, we will uh, get it into um, uh, uh, general trade. And I think even there, I think our focus will be on uh, organized retail uh, because uh, I think that, you know, uh, it's easier to reach and, uh, you know, uh, better to manage because, uh, you know, being a late entrant in the category, I think educating the consumers about, uh, you know, the cards uh, and, uh, you know, the benefits of our product, right? I think that will be key for us to break into the market. So I think at this stage, you know, we will remain at least for another year on uh, e com uh, before we plan to get you know, uh, to open market. Yeah? But it's not going, it's going on course and uh, we are quite satisfied with uh, the kind of uh, uh, traction that we are getting. Okay, sure. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Rahul Agarwal from Incred Capital. Please go ahead. Sir, thanks for the follow-up. Uh, the question essentially is on the working capital cycle. Uh, the 68 days, I think we've done you know, quite a bit of improvement, I think, over the last three quarters. Uh, should we stabilize here, or there is uh, more to improve here? It will be more or less around this. 
some incremental opportunities may be there but it's largely in the right place okay and uh, secondly on gigadine uh, i think so obviously it's a strategic investment and there is some business to be done on the inverter battery side of vigard uh, but uh, are we looking for an exit uh, you know from this company let's say 3 years down the line where there is a larger fund raise uh, which will happen eventually to get the product to the market see i mean we are there for a, as a strategic investor so that means we are interested in that product getting developed and how we can deploy it in our business um when a series b investor comes in the the ticket size will be much larger so our we will be, we will hold a small stake at this point we have not decided whether you know we will exit or sell or uh, we See, we are interested in the product capability we regard is not in the business of private equity so our our current focus is on making sure that this you know uh, idea moves to uh, lab from lab to pilot plant and from pilot plant to the uh, mother plant that's the next stage and we are working very closely you know we have a couple of people who are working and from vigard were working very closely with the gigatine on that and uh, we will see i think see we are we can't come in what we will do after 3 years and 5 years we will see at that point of time uh, but yeah i mean like i said we are not we are not bought into this company to sell out so to speak that explains thank you so much and uh, have a good diwali thank you thank you a reminder to all the participants you may press star and want to ask a question as there are no further question i will now like to hand the conference over to management for closing comments yeah we would like to thank uh, anurudha and icsa securities for hosting this call uh, thank you all for listening and have a happy diwali yeah happy diwali everyone happy diwali everyone thank you on behalf of icsa securities that concludes the conference thank you for joining us and you may now disconnect your lines